You're listening to the Deal Farm Podcast with Ken Corsini. Educating, inspiring, and connecting you to real estate deals. And now, your host, Ken Corsini. Hey, this is Ken Corsini with The Deal Farm. On today's Best Deal Ever episode, I've got Michael Del Preet. Michael, how you doing? Wonderful, man. Thanks for having me. Man, thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Anytime. So Michael is uh, the owner of We Heart Houses, which is a wholesaling company out of Phoenix, Arizona. He's uh, wholesaled, what, over 200 houses in just the last couple of years? You got it. Yes, sir. And we were just talking. He's actually in a real busy market, Phoenix. We know I know a number of guys that are wholesaling and, and very active, so I can imagine it's a pretty competitive space to be in. But, but Michael, before you got into wholesaling, how did you even find yourself in real estate? What were you doing before this? Before this long, you know, there's a lot to cover, but, um, you know, I originally started in the music industry where I was bringing local concerts and, and managing local acts here in Phoenix. So I was always in the uh, entrepreneur business and, um, you know, I always sold tickets and, and uh, that was kind of my, my thing. So when I found out I was having a son getting married, I just really realized that wasn't the lifestyle that I, I you know, wanted to be in anymore. So. I jumped in and, and got a regular job. So I was working at uh, Verizon Wireless in the customer service department. Hmm. Yep. So yeah, that's that's where I kind of started thinking about real estate. It was like early 2009, 2010. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's when everything just crashed we were around that era. So, um, you know, I'm working nine to five, just making a living. And then, you know, around the water cooler talk, everyone's just talking about all these websites. I think it was like hotpads.com. Um, <laughs> you know, houses were 10 grand, 15 grand condos. Everything was really cheap out here. So I just knew, you know, this, I had to look into it. So it was just because my friend used to hit him and his mother when it was booming the flipping house. And so I was like, something, something's going on here. So I started this googling youtubing just doing my research and um i just was amazed at what's out there so uh, what really got me was uh landlording and fixing flipping so that's that's all i knew because you watch the tv shows and so on and Mm -hmm. i was like i don't have money i don't have a hundred grand i don't have credit i can't swing a hammer that's for sure so i'm like landlording you know, I don't know anything about renting and, and taking care of a house. So it seems so far out of reach. So through through digging through Google and, you know, bigger pockets and all those, those sites I landed on, I started seeing uh, the term wholesaling. So I said, no money, no credit. And it's like, okay, I, that sounds like me right there. So I just, I just dug into it and I found this guy on YouTube. He had 100 videos, how to wholesale. And I just watched a hundred videos over to you know over a couple of weeks, and and I just started doing it. <laughs> and That's awesome. That, that, he just started doing I, it. I love that. I, I just started doing it. That, That's great. Seriously, seriously you just watch the videos and took action. I was working from Verizon from two in the afternoon to eleven o'clock at night. I'd wake up six seven in the morning and work till twelve one, just trying you know trying wholesaling and, and reading and putting out banded signs and writing postcards and. Until I got a, got a deal within 45 days. You know what's cool about that story is uh, how many of the folks I talk to who before they jump in and start into real estate, you know, everybody has this innate desire. They want to do it. But so many people jump right into expensive coaching packages or, uh, you know, doing seminars and whatnot. But what's interesting is you didn't, you didn't have any money. You didn't go that route. You just dug around on the Internet. And there's so much good information that's really freely available to you, like you said, on YouTube and bigger pockets. And you got to dig probably to find the good stuff, but it sounds like you did the digging and really got a pretty good education for free. Yeah. And, and as you know, you know, experience, like stuff you learn while you're just out there doing, you start learning these little tricks and you get you know, these little breakthroughs. Um, so what, what that led me into is I did, I sold a condo, um, wholesaled it out. And on my second deal, I found I, w- I was marketing it, and someone called me on Craigslist. So to kind of touch on everyone buys these expensive coaching package packages is this guy called me. I was on my lunch break checking my vo- my, my Google Voice number, and uh, nice. I was like, "Hey, this is so and so. 
And I was like, oh, this guy sounds familiar. I think I know him. I called him, and, and I was like, is this who I think it is? And I went to high school with him. So <laughs> I was like, what are you doing? He's like, oh, I hope so. Da, da, da. I'm, okay, I'm trying to do that. This is what I, I got a deal. This is what I'm doing. He, he was like, come down to the office. Let me see what you're doing. So went up and met with him. And I brought all my leads, you know, because as you know, people that have been in the business, they could, they could, they could see the invisible, you know, when you're new, you, you don't know all the strategies and, and the techniques to, to get deals done. So um, he brought four deals. We, we kind of linked together and brought, he brought four deals back to life for me. So we just became partners. So what I wanted to touch on on that is get a mentor. Um, it doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to be a big coaching package. It could be a local guy in town. You split deals with it's simple as that and we actually connected because he could structure a deal and convert it i was always good at marketing because i was in the music business selling tickets so traffic times conversion equals revenue so it just kind of smashed together and we did 30 deals my first year in the business wow holy cow that's awesome in a crowded space too like phoenix that's very cool and that well at that time the the crowd that was here was the money so that you know australia china yeah. canada that's what was here no one was flipping um it was very distressed but yeah the guys with money were here but the, they really didn't know how to really get the deals they're dealing with real estate agents so guys like us did pretty well um because we we're able to hunt down those stressed deals yeah absolutely so just out of curiosity, so you, you hooked up with your buddy, you had all these leads. How did you go back and turn those, some of those leads into deals that you had kind of missed before? Um, well, bringing them to, to my, my old partner. So he was just able to pick up the phone, find, pro, you know, so find the problem. Me, when you first start, it's, all right, you call me, take an application, do your 70% rule, right? Minus repairs, your plus your profit, make the offer. Yes, no, hang up next. So gotcha. that, that was the newbie in me. So he was able to say, hey, what's really going on? What what do you need to solve your house issue? You know, um, and he was able just to convert the deal by understanding what was going on and, and already being him being in the business, he had buyers already. So we we're able to connect the dots a lot easier. Whereas me, I would just have to hope for that low ball offer to come in and then market it because I had no, no buyers yet, you know? Yep. I think that's a huge lesson actually right there is that, you know, it's not just the numbers in and out sort of thing. I mean, most, most of our deals come through follow-up and I, and I think that's true for, for most mm -hmm. of the folks that are out there marketing for motivated seller leads. It's all in the follow-up, but not just the follow-up, but even, even understanding in the negotiation process and having some understanding of how to work with motivated sellers. I mean, you pop four extra deals that you would have missed if your buddy hadn't come along and helped you work them. I think that's a huge very, uh, lesson. Very, very huge. And yeah, so find a mentor, joint venture partner. You guys don't have to go into business together. Um, just be on the same page, you know, of what you guys want from each other and how long it's going to last and, and, and see where it goes. So yeah, that, that's, that's, then I fired my boss, you know, less than a year. So you were how much? Yeah, how how much business were you doing on the side while you still had a full time job? Oh, we we well we did thirty. So it was probably a few deals a month that we were doing um, at that time. So I went I went was working full time, then I cut down the part time, and then I just cut ties. Gotcha. So you uh, that's awesome though that that's that you were able to work that out. It wasn't such a big risk. You already had some good deals in the pipeline. Yeah, you exactly. went part time and then eventually stepped off completely. Yes, exactly. 100%. That's a pretty smooth transition. Yeah, I, I'm thankful. I'm very, very thankful that that's how things played out. And, and that's the first thing I tell anyone that wants to start is just link up. With, even to this day, like I was telling you, I have a coach now. I had a coach before, Jay. And and, and that's kind of like what I think is you said, the, kind of going into the follow up, you know, 3% of people that contact you are low hanging fruit and will buy. So the other nine, what, who, Who's, no one's really doing anything with the 97%. So people fail to see, all they know is the 3%. It's kind of like the, they only see like the tip of the iceberg. You ever see that Facebook uh, picture? It's like, they don't, you don't see the real business on the bottom. Mm -hmm. so, yep. You know, so, so we're so used to seeing that, 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 that top of it. And uh, yeah, that, that follow up, uh, getting, you know, even I hit that point 
up until last year where, you know, I was doing 40, 50 deals a year. Yeah, it's great. I like it. But uh, you, there's that glass ceiling that, that we're trying, I'm trying to get past. And I had to get a, I went out and got a coach too. You know, it's a, yeah, I paid for it, but it was, it was nothing compared to what I'm doing in business and where I'm going. You know, it was just, so yeah, go out there and- but, that's a, but that's a natural progression. I mean, I, I, I think you're right. I think having mentors and coaches can be a really good thing, but like just starting out, you didn't have any money, credit or anything. And you just, you learned as much as you could on the internet to start, mm-hmm. but then you got yourself to a point where you were doing deals. You had some good deal flow and you knew you needed some, some better education. And at that point in time, you stepped out and got a mentor. You got a business coach. I think that's a great progression. I think it makes a ton of sense. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so, t- so talk about your business now. So how many years ago was that, that you left f- your full-time job at Verizon and c- what, what's your business looked like since then? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I was at, that was 2000, end of 2010. Um, yeah, I ventured off. So we're going on, yeah, just hit five years actually. And, um, yeah, like I said, done over 200 deals. I'm doing 40, 50 deals, wholesale deals a year. Um, and that's been my main, my main thing is just, uh, other people's money, other people's resources and leveraging and, and flipping wholesale deals. So let's talk about what your business looks like, just out of curiosity, because that's a, that's a really good wholesaling business. 40 to 50 deals a year is super solid. You built that in, you know, only four or five years time. Um, what does your business look like now? I mean, what's, what's your marketing look like? What's your sales funnel look like? How do you guys put your business together? Okay. So I mentioned before the, the call, so I'm, I'm transitioning out of the, out of the wholesale arena, but this year, the last few years, I've, I've always just kept it simple. Uh, direct mail, you know, you have those uh, distress triggers, you know, absentee foreclosure, um, fire damage and tax lien. So, so there's, I had focuses on specific um, distress triggers, sent direct mail to them. And, uh, you know, the, you know, you do the hunting, the digging for, for a private investigator, uh, looking for those leads, you know, on the follow up or who we didn't get a hold of. So I had, I had the direct mail going. I always have bandit signs going and um, bird dogs. So I do uh, like a small coaching group here in Phoenix every month. Once a month, I have about 10, 15 people come in and it's kind of just, you know, people that want to learn. I teach for free. I tell you everything I know. I give you the tools and knowledge you need to go to the marketplace. And I just offer, hey, bring the deal back. I'll split it 50-50. So um, actually 17 deals I did this year were just off of network, just people, person to person, you know. So, very cool. so yeah, I keep it very simple. I have no, nothing crazy, just band signs, direct mail and just connecting the dots and networking and, and meeting people and putting deals together. So on your, um, on your direct mail, were you sending postcards or yellow letters? What were you sending out? I was doing 6,000 letters and I would, I would switch it. So, um, I rotated. So I had for the absentee list, I would send a yellow letter. Then I would do a tax lien letter the next month, which was a, a yellow letter. Then I would do the same list with postcards because on the next two months, Okay. See, so okay. I switch it. Yellow letter, postcard, yellow letter. Okay. Get to the same list, sort of the same area. Were you really um, mining a specific geographic area or like all of Phoenix? Um, yes, there's specific areas uh, of Phoenix that I, I like to work. Yes. So it was like, gotcha. like West Phoenix, South Phoenix, some of Central. So yeah, I had my areas that I knew what kind of houses um, I like to work with and, and what my buyers would like. Yes. Um. And were you, just out of curiosity, on the on the flip side, so when you were getting some of these uh, leads in, what were you doing in terms of sales? How did you build your buyers list? Because that's the other huge component to wholesaling. You can find all the deals in the world, but if you don't have anybody to sell them to, it's sort of pointless. So how how are you also building your buyers list? Well, the, over time, obviously, that it, it's always built. I obviously had a, a website where people can go to and see my deals and punch in their email to be on the list. Um, a lot of networking. Um, a lot of phone calls, just, you know, when you have deals all the time, people, you attract people. So I was kind of fortunate on that end where I always had deals rolling every month where your phone, just people, your marketing, all your, when you market a deal, people call on it. It's good. So mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very strict on every person that calls, every person that emails, we get the buyer, a buyer application. And, you know, that's how we, we pretty much built it is just 
I don't really have anything, uh, any secret sauce. You know, when we do get deals, um, I go within a mile radius on MLS and for all the cash buyers. Um, I, nice. I send them letters. I Google their name, uh, you know, white page their name, uh, and I try to find people that bought in properties in the area. So that's always been one um, through the networking. Same thing, the same thing I do with the cash buyers around the uh, property, I do with real estate agents. So I contact all the real estate agents and they sometimes they just, they're just like, just call this guy. I don't, I, I don't even know why, but they refer me to their buyers or they stay in the loop, whatever it is. But I build agents that way, build uh, buyers that way. Those are in, in networking, man, just good old networking, Facebook, just being out there and active. Is there an active uh, RIA in your market that you've been able to network at? Oh, yeah. 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 There's a big RIA out here. It's called Ezria. And um, they do a once a month club uh, downtown. And they have, and they have subgroups for fixing flippers, wholesalers, uh, landlords, and, and stuff. So there's a, lot, there's a lot of opportunity here in Phoenix for networking. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, I, most wholesalers don't go as far as doing a buyer's application. Do you feel like it's, it's sort of interesting? I have seen some that do it. How does that play out? I'm just curious. Do you feel like that scares anybody away? They don't want to go to the, the trouble of filling one out to get on your list? Or do you feel like you get more serious buyers because they do that? I think you get more serious buyers. And yes, uh, okay, so if someone's going to give you a problem now, they're probably going to give you a problem later. So if someone calls me, like I have cash right now, I will buy a 10 unit apartment building in Phoenix. So if you call me and say, I get 10 unit apartment buildings, I'm going to give you everything you want to know. <laughs> so, and, sure. and I'm build that relationship. I'm going to be friends with you. And, and cause it, our business is all about relationships. So uh, anyone that calls me, you know, I paid for that. I put effort for my phone to ring. So I'm not going to just going to be, you know, rude or, or whatever it is. So when guys, when I do call someone, they're just, I understand people get busy. I understand. But if you still want to give me, one minute just so I can not waste your time in the future and only call you with what is good for you and what you're really looking for. It shouldn't be a problem. So do you have like a CRM where you keep track of, okay, these, these applicants want this specific area or this kind of property. And then you're, you filter that when you get a certain kind of property that fits their criteria. Yes. Um, I have Podio. So, um, every buyer app that we get gets uploaded to Podio. Um, you could always, you know, you can, there's tags where you can just search it. So it's a lot easier these days. Um, I do also have, you know, I have the mass email blast where everyone gets it. But when that property comes in, sometimes before I even do the blast, I'll just search Podio and look for that exact buyer and pick up the phone. Gotcha. Gotcha. Were you doing any Craigslist advertising for investors or bandit signs specifically for investors? Um, yep. All the time. That's something you have, you know, bandit signs to get. That's another way of getting buyers. You know, when you have a property in a certain area, you put bandit signs up and everyone in that, I think that's a great way to get buyers. You would never really, uh, get in touch with because, um, sometimes you have, at least here in Phoenix, sometimes they get that, that one time, in, uh, home buyer buying for their, their daughter that wants to stay in the neighborhood. And, or you just get those landlords that are, have a couple rentals in the, they're not that active, but they want more rentals in their neighborhood. So uh, yes, bandit signs have built uh, the buyer's list as well. Very cool. And, and, you know, it really, there's no magic bullet. It's kind of what I'm hearing. It's yeah. you're, you're doing all the things everybody tells you to do, but what you're doing is you're doing it consistently. I mean, it sounds like you're doing day in, day out. You're going to stick into your rules. And, and over time, you just, you build your buyer's list you build your motivated sellers list and you just work it. Yeah, it's, it's daily action, uh, constantly working towards, you know, building your sellers, right? And building your mm -hmm. buyers list. You got to build both of them because buyers go through cycles. You always got to have new buyers uh, coming onto the list. Same as the sellers. Not every seller has a bunch of houses. It's usually just one house. So you're just constantly looking. And that's why you get systems and, and processes in place and people to, to help keep those running. You know, the other thing you touched on that I, I, I'm really intrigued by, because I know a handful of other guys around the country that have just started doing this as well, is the, the whole idea of building a, a, a small group of bird dogs through almost like a monthly coaching session. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really intrigued by that. How did you get that started? And how did that come, come to take place? Well, you know, when you're, when you're networking, you're out there, you're doing deals, um, you kind of track the newer people. Hey, I just getting started. You know, can I buy a cup of coffee? So I started. I do started doing that a lot, and then I 
I just, after probably like a year's time, I was like, wow, there, you know, I, there's a lot of tire kickers. So I don't really want to deal with them as much. I, I totally get why people charge like on the infomercials or whatever. Mm-hmm. It makes sense. Sure. But um, so I took a group of five people that been consistently bringing me deals over the year were loyal to me, bringing me deals, always learning and, and progressing themselves. So that's worth it to me. So I said, rather than just meeting everybody one-on-one random times, let's just all get together uh, once a month. And then they can network together and build relationships and do deals. Um, and I can also, you know, just help them all at the same time. So I covered a topic and then did laser consulting and just answered any questions that they had. So from there, it just organically grew. Would be able to say, "Hey, can I bring someone? You'd like them?" And so and so. So that's how I kind of started the local group. Gotcha. I gotcha. And then, so that's grown. How how long have you been doing that now? Uh, it's about, about a year now. And you're grown to what? About fifteen regular people, or is it different every time? You know, just like any other thing, it's yeah, it's different every time. Maybe I'll get six one month. Maybe I'll get fifteen one month. It just uh, you know, it's just uh, I just. Send out a message, letting everyone know it, it's on, and this is what we're doing, and where it is, and what time. It's well, the same time every day, every month, same place. But um, things happen. Not everyone can always make it, and I don't really, I don't push out there. So I don't have like Meetup.com. It's just, just private. So yeah, I've been, cons- I got I've been considering opening it up, but it's kind of, it's cool. It's kind of intimate, but um, we'll see where it goes. It's worth. Yeah. And so you you offer them what a 50-50 split if they bring you the deal and you sell it? Yeah, regardless. If you bring it to me, um, yes. If you bring it to me, either A, I'll buy it and, and we'll or, you know, put something in place where they get paid fairly. Or yes, um, bring it to the table. We'll commit to each other and we'll market it you know, together so they, they you know, learn and earn at the same time. So I'll walk them through the whole deal, every call I make to the title company or contracts and we just go over it all together. That's very cool. Now, how much of, how much of those deals are you f- like actually fixing and flipping versus just wholesaling? I do all wholesaling. It's all wholesaling. I, I have uh, last year about oh, two deals. I did uh, I did two flips, but they were I did a joint venture, so it's always leveraging. So they brought the money in the repairs, I brought the deal, so on. So that's how I do, did my flips and how I started getting my rentals. Gotcha. Now, in talking, you'd mentioned that you are starting to move away from wholesaling and towards a new strategy. Let's talk about that a little bit. How, what prompted you to move away from wholesaling? Move away from wholesaling. I love the money. I love the fast cash, right? Um, and I always will. I think it's like a tool in the toolbox that it's a skill that you can never – it's always great to have that skill. So I'll always wholesale. Um, but I'm just – you know, I was always chasing the deal. So – you know, maybe because maybe I never grew my team uh, so big or whatever and scaled up to where I have a staff and so on. But, uh, you know, I felt like I was always chasing the deal, always going through sales reps. So, I, you know, as much as I love that, I, I, getting your income to exceed your uh, expenses uh, from rental properties is, you know, true wealth. Like everyone probably mentions, <laughs> you probably hear a lot, rich dad, poor dad. Um, yeah that that's the freedom man. that's what I'm looking for, especially with a wife and son. Um, just being able to do what I want, what my, my personal mission is to do what I want, when I want, where I want with whoever I want. <laughs> so <laughs> I, I can't build those fun and exciting memories. Why I'm talking to motivated sellers in a tough neighborhood at a kitchen table and just like, you know, working through the deal, working out through all the kinks. I mean, I like it, but I don't think I'm in love with it. So, um, yeah. I, 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 I would say the, the rentals I've built over the time, uh, when those checks come in every month and I'm not, I'm not doing anything, I, I really like that. How, how many rentals have you bought so far? I have 10. 10 houses. 10, nice. Yes. Nice. Yep. You're just curious, how, how did you finance them? Or do you have any sort of long-term financing in place? Uh, back to leveraging. Um, yes, always other people's money. Um, all, found, all found through wholesaling, right? So yes, yep. it's either... Uh, raising the money, you know, private money, no hard money lenders or anything, just relationships from investors I've met through the years. Nice. So you're going to continue sort of being an active wholesaler, but then 
pull the ones over that you want into into like a rental portfolio for your long term wealth building? Yes, yes. So it's still going to do the wholesale coaching. Still going to take those leads. Um, just to invest the investor relationships you build uh, from your reputation over time. Uh, you get deals from. I get a deal every month from some. You know, from that type of situation. I had an investor call me before Thanksgiving. He's about to fix and flip a, uh, a project. He said he opened up the walls. I guess there's all, all this fire damage was was hidden. He was about to go on vacation. He was just like, I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to wholesale it. So he just sends it. To, every time he gets a deal, I think he just sends it to me. So um, that's just a free deal, no marketing. <laughs> and, yeah, you gotta love those, man. Yeah, so I'm thankful for those for sure. So I have between the the group and those type of relationships, I. I'm doing a couple of deals anyways, so that I'm going into the transition of uh, raising capital and building my rental portfolio. So nice. Well, and to make the distinction, um, you know, wholesaling is a business. It's sort of where you derive your income. Where putting together a, por- a portfolio of rentals is really investing. That's true long-term wealth building strategies. Yes. So you've, and for most of us, guys like me and you and, uh, and other folks who are in this business, there's, there really is a distinction there between how you earn your living, you know, your day-to-day paycheck, which would be your wholesaling versus, you know, where you're trying to build your long-term wealth, which is through your rentals. Mm-hmm. Yes. So I, I could totally see you continue doing your, you're already, you already got your systems in place. You might as well just keep wholesaling, keep getting that paycheck, but then plunk as much of that as you can into your long-term wealth building, which is your rentals. Yeah, exactly. And and it's one reason I kind of slowed down on the wholesaling though is the the focus portion of it. So it came. It also came to the point in my life. So it's like, yes, I want rentals. I could slowly build it. Why I'm wholesaling, but what do I truly want? You know, it's kind of like. When I was at, when I had a fire, my boss is kind of a nerve wracking feeling. So I'm going from quick, quick cash to farming. So it's a, mm-hmm. it's, a it's a big transition, but I want to reach my goals. I, I want to be out of the rat race. So um, even though the money's good in wholesaling, it, it, it is it's a good distraction, but it's a distraction. So sure. I'm just going all out. On, on, far, on, on the raising money and building my rental uh, portfolio. What's your goal? Just out of curiosity for your rentals. Well, the initial, my, my huge goal is uh, 500 units um, of real estate. Man, that's awesome. That's that's the goal. But my initial, just, you know, you know mini victories uh, is 40 units. So within the next six months, I want to buy 40 units of real estate, whether it's uh, four 10-unit buildings, two 20-unit buildings, Maybe I get some uh, house opportunities I'll look at for sure. So uh, mm-hmm. that's my initial goal. Then I, you know, once I hit that, celebrate, go on to the, then make the next one to get closer to the 500. Gotcha. Killer, man. You are well on your way. Now, is there one deal in particular over the last five years that you've been in business that stands out to you that's your best deal ever? Yes. One of my best deal ever is, I would say, um, middle of my career, uh, let's say it was uh, in Central Phoenix, in a historic neighborhood, um, which are very popular, especially now. I bought a property for five thousand dollars. So that deal there, the guy lived up in northern Arizona. He found him on Craigslist, motivated seller on Craigslist. Still works, by the way, not as much, but they're still out there. And um, he was just like, "Hey, my father passed." I'm just done with it. I want $25,000. And we're like, okay, great. Let me check it out. There was a squatter in there. So, um, you know, after looking at the house and, and the work it needed, we're, you know, we just, you know, just lowballed your, your, your value, did your, your normal offer. And we offered him uh, $5,000. Let him know the squatter was in there. He was willing to do it because he had some type of anger or hate for the city of Phoenix that he said, I am not ever in my life going to ever sit foot in that city. I don't, I can't believe I had to deal with this squatter. I, that, that made it even worse for him because he, he's seeking court sheriff or whatever it is to, to get this guy out. So we, you know, we got this, the guy out, we gave him 150 bucks to get him, <laughs> to, to get him out. Nice. Um, so I bought the house for $5,000 and then one of my joint venture partners, a uh, fix and flipper in the area, told him about the house. He came and looked at it. He's like, let's do it. So I was like, I'll sell it to you for $10,000. He's like, all right, well, backtrack a little bit. This guy originally told me 
any house I bring to him, he'll split with me 50-50, rental or flip. So, so that's the first person I called. So checked it out. He's like, let's do it. I was like, it's going to be a 10,000 10, $10, acquisition. So he came in, he bought the property, 10,000, put five in my pocket. He put eight grand into the property. Um, so we're into it at 18. We rented it out for 800. And then he comes to me and says, hey, you know what? Let's just, I got this lady, let's just refi it. Uh, you know, private money. I think it was like 10 or 12%. And he was just like, we'll pull out 25. I'll get my 18 back and we'll split the seven. So we got another $3,500 in my pocket. Um, and we still have to rent it out to this day. Holy cow. So you've just got private money on it? Yeah, he had a, he had a relationship where, you know, he was able to get 100%, 100% financing. So based on his repairs, his initial money to get into the deal, his, his contractor fixed the place, then his relationship with the private money refied it. And so we first started paying, um, we still have that $25,000 one to this day. And um, we just cash flow on it every month. So that's, and, and you got a stable tenant in there, 800 a month. Eight, well, we've been through tenants through the years, but yes, that's the average rate. That's what we've been getting. Um, we we're, we we're lucky to get it back then. And this, the fact that we still have it now, you know, we probably could raise rents, but, um, we're, we're content. And, uh, but what that showed me, right. Being, you know, kind of new in wholesaling was, cause all I knew was wholesaling, right. Buyer, sellers, buyer, sellers. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, sure. what did this guy just do? <laughs> right. I was like, he didn't even use, you know, yes, he used his money up front, um, but we did some deals in the future where he didn't. So it's like, man, this guy kind of leveraged everything in a whole new way, kind of opened my eyes to what's out there. So he really, he recouped his money in less than a month and, yeah. and he owns half of it. I own half of it and no, we all have our money, you know, no money out of our pocket. So, so that's why I, that was one of my, Solid. my favorite deals. I love that deal. I love it because... I I really like the idea of wholesalers and flippers or, or JVing with each other. And I've done a handful of those as well with some good wholesalers in Atlanta where they'll bring me a deal and, and instead of just buying it from them and putting cash in their pocket, they can actually make more if they just agree to go 50-50 with me on it. I've never done that on a long-term rental. I think that's really, really creative and worked out great for you. Now you got this, you know, annuity coming in every month. I mean, you never expect, you, you were content making five. Yep. Instead you made, you know, like, 8,500. Now you've got this regular rent coming in. I mean, it worked out good for you. It worked out good for him too. Like you said, he recouped all his money. Everything now is just butter that's coming in every month. But there you go. the whole notion of JVing with wholesalers and, and uh, uh, with fix and flippers or renters, I love it. I think that's such a, it's a win-win scenario. Definitely is. Definitely is. Very cool. Well, Michael, um, this has been an awesome interview. Give us an idea. Where can we point people to? If there was an investor out there that likes what you're doing and maybe wants to partner with you or or even a potential seller, where would you direct them to? Weharthouses.com. So uh, you go to my website, you can find all my social media links, you can read about me, watch my testimonials, um, my phone number, you know, anything you need is on the website. Um, hop on there, educate yourself. I have, uh, if you're interested in wondering, you know, if you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing, um, I have an ebook for free that you can download right on the front page. Uh, especially if you have like a 401k or um, an IRA of some sort, um, the ebook's about self-directed IRAs and the possibilities um, that you have. So feel free to take a look at that as well. Awesome. Very cool. I'll check that out myself. Uh, Michael, thanks so much for coming on the show, man. I super appreciate it. Yeah, no, thank you for having me once again. And uh, yeah, thank you. Awesome. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.